Devotees at tribal villages called Sringavirpur. Yeah, the chief of that village was Guha. And yeah, he ruled over a tribe called Nishads. Okay? Ruling over a tribe. He was a great devotee of the Lord himself. And he will learn that the Lord is traveling his way. And welcome the Lord to his village. Yes, Guha previously was a hunter. And unfortunately, for us to say it's good, his good devotees, deeds, in fact, somehow or the other. On a Shivratri day, he did not know it was Shivratri. His family had no food. He went to the forest to hunt. He could not catch anything. He saw a tree by a pond. He decided to climb it. It was a bilwa tree. And every time a deer came to drink, as he go to take out an arrow from his quiver to place on the bow, with dew fallen, a bale pot fell on the shivling below. And every time he did that, his sins just began to wash away. Right? For four periods during the course of the night, he did that, and all his sins eventually diminished. Lord Shiva blessed him that he will be reborn as a boatman. Your name will be Guha, and you will have the blessed privilege to meet Lord Vishnu when he comes on earth as Shiriram. You will do the blessed privilege of ferrying the Lord across the river Ganges. And uh, you will be eman emancipated from this body of yours. When devotees, Guha learned, scout had reported to him that Shri Ram, Lakshman, and uh, Sita, they are coming this way. He organized a trusted party and will go to welcome them on the outskirts of his village. He took a few trusted warriors And will welcome the Lord together with Sita and Lakshman. The highest way of welcome prescribed by our forefathers, you go out and meet somebody and welcome them into your home. It's the highest way. The, the passionate way, you just tell them, oh, they come inside. Uh. And the lowest way is, you yeah, invite them to come. They had to come for themselves and look for a place to sit down. When Guha saw Shri Ram, he felt on his feet prostrated. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, how blessed I am to have you to visit my village. Uh, he bowed to Lakshman, he bowed to Sita, and so devotees, that love was overflowing in his heart. He could not contain the love according to the scriptures, right? Shiriram devotees embraced him, hugged him, seeing that love overflowing. And inquiring of each other's welfare, Guha was informed of the estate of exile. He ushered the Lord into his village. But Sri Ram said, my brother, listen, I accept your hospitality, but my terms and condition of exile are, I must not enter any town or village for 14 years. I will have to be dressed as a hermit for 14 years and eat the food of a hermit for 14 years. He said, however, I see a beautiful shady tree and I'm going to stay under that tree for the night. And so devotees, the, the, the Nishads had prepared a bed made of soft leaves and grass and ushered the Lord to come and take his seat there. So having thus devotees, he will sit under that tree for the night and stay there. These Nishads, and this is how we honor guests, with love and devotion, whatever they had, they brought to the Lord. Right? Now you in the forest. Some of you go in the forest. You don't have wear plate in the forest. And you don't have nice glass to drink in. If you're in the forest and you're thirsty, what are you, what are you drinking? Yeah? Long time you drink ravine water, nobody again sick. Think about it. You make a cup with a leaf. You make a plate with a leaf. All these things. And they went and they gathered roots, fruits, and shoots, and they brought to the Lord. And as they brought to the Lord, it says here that uh, Ram, Lakshman, and Sita had their fill. 
and devotees, having been fatigued over that period of travel, the Lord slept under that tree. Lakshman and Guha will have a discussion during the night. Right? Lakshman came where Guha was and they sat down there. We are going to keep watch over our Lord for the night. And so devotees, they are going to engage in a conversation. And they show us a lesson here. Time should not be wasted. Time must be used constructively. The greatest treasure that a man has is time. Time, time. Do not waste time. They will use the eight hours to discuss on the fundamentals and principles of righteousness. Okay? And how to make this world a better place to live in. This is what constructive, constructive people does. Not to worsen the situation in the place. Guha devotees was a bit hurt when he saw Ram under that tree. And Lakshman had to tell him, my brother, this is the creation of the Lord. He is above the attachment of materialism. He is performing his leela, his sportive activities. And all that you have seen is with his physical eyes. And the physical eyes can only see within a boundary called materialism. And everything that is material, it's short-lived. It comes to an end. It will come to an end, my brother. They had a nice discussion there as he explained the situation of karma. Everything is based on the logical law of karma, of cause and effect. Right? He said, Guha, listen. We are confused by materialism. You go to a wedding, two people come together, you are happy. But do you realize one day will separate? Not until they divorce, eh? but until they do part. You go to a child's birth ceremony. You are happy a new child is born. You ever sit down to think that that child will have to get old and die? Nobody ever wants to think that. We believe in this world. This is my house and my land and my car and my asset. Does it really belong to you? No, you can't carry one single thing. Huh? We get tied up and engrossed in materialism. God give you one thing, you want two. Where do you get two where you want? Three. Three ain't enough, you want 15. Does desires in materialism ever come to an end? No. It keeps mounting and mounting and takes away valuable time that was meant to spend for the purpose for which we are here, to serve the Lord and his creation with a guileless heart. Devotees, they discussed on the fundamentals and principles of righteousness during the course of that night. And early next morning, when the Lord awoke devotees, that discussion came to an end between uh, devotees, between Guha and Lakshman. Shidiram then called Lakshman. He said, Lakshman, we are on a mission. We cannot idle here. We have to cross the river Ganges, the wide span of the Ganges River. I tell you, someday if you can help it, make a visit to that land. And devotees, visit that holy river and take a bath in it. It is mysterious. Right? So Sri Ram called the Lakshman and Lakshman devotees called upon Guha. Guha Bhai, my Lord does not want to waste time. He has to cross the river Ganga. You are the boatman here and you are the chief of the village. Could you arrange to take us across the Gang Ganga? <coughs> so Guha said, my Lord, Lakshman, definitely I am here for that. But listen, my Lord, and he brings them to his boat. This is my boat. I make my living with this boat. I am very skeptical. So Lakshman said, why? He said, I have heard that Ram touched a stone statue and he changed into a lady. Supposing the Lord touched my boat and he changed into a lady, how we can live in? Huh? Hence, my Lord, I want this privilege. I want to wash and leave your feet before I ferry you across. And so devotees, Shri Ram allowed him, washing the feet, sprinkling it over him, over his entire village. Padapakari Dalpanatari Apasahita Parivar Horama Apa 
सहित परिवार पितर पार करे प्रभु ही पुनी मूर्त भय उने पार सिया पति राम चंद्र जी की जाए शरणम Having left the feet of the Lord, sprinkled that water all over his boat, right, all in the village and so on, devotees. I have had the privilege to leave the feet of the Lord. What blessed issue is this? What good did I do in thousands of births? And then he ushered the Lord devotees into his boat as they will be ferried across the Ganga. Guha will ferry across the Lord over the wide span of the river Ganga as they leave the village of Sringabirpur. The rolling thunder does a voice hail as Shidiram moves further into the forest area. Prem se bolia Prabhu Ramachandra ke.